What's going on people? Welcome back to my personal channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys. In this video we're going to be discussing four things that Frank Lampard needs to change in order to try and improve results at Chelsea and let's be real we can look back at the last six results and Chelsea have looked an absolute mess. We've gone straight from being title contenders to being absolute pretenders. And a lot of people are calling for Frank Lampard's head now. It is a massive switch up from the team that we saw a month ago. And the mood around Chelsea has completely switched as well. Lampard in versus Lampard out is becoming the biggest debate of the Premier League season. And we're going to sit here and try and look at things from a positive note. We're going to be honest with ourselves because... It's, there's not really a lot of positivity to talk about for being real about the last few games have been absolutely dreadful but we're gonna sit here we're gonna address what's gone wrong and we're gonna address what Frank Lampard needs to do to try and change things up but before we start this video as usual if you guys haven't done so already hit the like button press the subscribe button smash the bell notification button as well and let's go straight into four things Frank Lampard needs to change up First point we're going to discuss, we're going to talk about the midfield. Now, for a midfield that we have, one of the best midfields in the league, in my opinion, on paper and in terms of the ability of each player that we have in the squad right now, we look absolutely disjointed and the players look like they've completely regressed from last season. We look completely disjointed. We don't press as a team. We press as individuals, which means we leave massive spaces exposed in certain areas of the field, which is why it's so easy for opposition teams to outnumber us when we're in transition or when they're transitioning from defence to attack because we never really look switched on. We don't have any bite in the centre of the park as well. All we ever really try and do when we get the ball is move it forwards, but then pass it sideways or backwards towards one of the wide areas in order to try and get a cross in. And that just means we're absolutely predictable but it also means the mid teams don't have to worry about us because all we do is the exact same thing in the team and golo kante in the lone dm role i've spoken about it numerous of times he's only good against teams that don't press him if you face a good team with a good pressing system he gets absolutely exposed and the manchester city game is a big example of it everyone's gonna sit here and say why didn't why wasn't there more midfielders helping golo kante out that's the whole point of having a lone dm and having two attacking eights the lone dm should be able to handle the job by himself he needs to be able to be tall, imposing, vocal, and he needs to be able to pass out the back under pressure. I love N'Golo Kante. He barely ticks any of those marks as a midfielder. He is a box-to-box -box centre midfielder with amazing break-up play. That is where he is at his peak, and I've said that for time, but like that's it. I don't want to delve too much into it. Kante and Mount also being massively overplayed hasn't really helped our circumstance over the last few games because if we have two of the same three midfielders playing in this mad Christmas period, no wonder we fall apart in the midfield in the later stages of the game because they're just not going to last we, we talk about rotation fair play to Lampard he's rotated in certain areas and there's other areas that he just hasn't rotated at all and the center of the park is a big example of it our transitioning in my opinion is now nearly as bad as it was when we were in the 4-2-3-1 formation and that was the exact reason why we switched from the 4-2-3-1 to the 4-3-3 in the first place because we could never switch from defense to attack consistently because we always kept losing the ball in the defensive midfield area of the pitch. And now it looks like the exact same thing is rearing its head again. And this is a surprising thing because Frank Lampard is one of the greatest midfielders in football history. But our midfield, it's not translating to them. If anything, they're getting worse and worse and worse. And this is the area of the pitch that I expect Lampard to be at his smartest in. But the midfield looks absolutely disjointed. We don't move as a team. We just do the same things, which is move the ball forwards and pass it out wide. So my first issue is the midfield. The midfield imbalance is absolutely terrible over the last few games. Second thing that Frank Lampard needs to change, he needs to make the team a lot less predictable because it is so easy to figure us, us out as a squad. We continuously play the same formation and the same tactics game in and game out. The last time we played the 4-2-3-1 formation was in the 4-0 win against Sevilla. By the way, I know both teams rotated for that game, but a 4-0 win, look what happens when you change things up. Ever since then, we have played the same formation, same 4-3-3 formation, same tactics, same end result, which just ends up with us spamming crosses all game, which is even more baffling in my opinion, knowing that our only aerial threat is, a, is Olivier Giroud in both our attack 
and our midfield as well. So you sit there and half the games Olivier Giroud doesn't even play, which makes the tactics and the style of play that we use even more baffling because we know Tammy Abraham, for someone of his frame, someone of his body size, he is absolutely terrible in the air and he can't win those aerial battles. And if we're talking about screaming to, about Timo Werner to play up front, it's not going to work playing Werner up front if you played those same tactics because he's going to be even worse in the air than Tammy Abraham. But that hasn't stopped us showing the same sort of tactics over the last three games. We've had Tammy Abraham having balls hoofed into him with no end result. We've had Timo Werner having balls hoofed into him with no end result. Hell, I've seen us crossing the ball to Christian Pulisic half the time in the Manchester City game and it was the easiest job possible for those Manchester City centre-backs. Even when Olivier Giroud plays, he is our only aerial threat at times, which means it's very hard for him to try and make the most of those battles. Sometimes he wins them, sometimes he loses them. He has a much better chance of winning those battles than Tammy Abraham and Timo Werner and Christian Pulisic combined. But if he is our only aerial threat in our attacking team, in our midfield as well, it doesn't make sense to be, continue to persist with the same tactics. And I get you want to say practice makes perfect and everything, and you need to go through the rough patches right now in order for it to hopefully work in the future. But predictability does not bring results. We all know what the definition of insanity is. It's doing the same things again and again and again and expecting a different result. This is why we have only won one game in our last seven. And even that one, fans look at it as a false result because we were dominated for long periods by West Ham as well. We never really really looked that dominant in the game anyway. So my second point, Frank Lampard, he needs to make the team less predictable. I don't care if we go back to the 4-2-3-1 and it means we maybe uh, concede more goals. I don't care. We created more chances in the 4-2-3-1 anyway and Kepa played in goal for most of those games in the 4-2-3-1. So Kepa tax is still going to run for this one as well. I'd be confident if we switch to that, if we switch to 4-2-2-2, even if it meant that we didn't have to play any wingers because our midfield is strong enough already. Hell, even if we ended up going to five at the back, I wouldn't care too much. Just do something different. Be unpredictable and give the opposition something to think about. Because right now we are the most predictable team in the league. And this is the same thing we knocked Mikel Arteta for being like for months. And now here we are doing the exact same thing. The third point that I'd like to see Lampard improve in order to try and improve results would be to clear the deadwood. Now, I'm going to go into backstory first before I start off with this. And I do also want to say as well that I understand that Frank Lampard can't necessarily change this single-handedly because he's the head coach and not the manager, so he hasn't got the final say in these decisions. But this would also go a long way to improving the morale in the squad, and I'm going to explain why. Now, we all know with Chelsea's transfer ban in 2019, this meant that Chelsea had a year's worth of revenue that they could save up and spend in the future transfer window which came in this summer. That combined with the Eden Hazard and the Alvaro Morata money gave Chelsea a massive amount of leverage in the summer transfer window due to the pandemic and the transfer crash that happened as a result of it due to the losses that nearly every club in Europe experienced due to the lockdowns that they all had to go in for about three to four months. But because of this and because of the money that Chelsea also had saved because we didn't, we weren't spending last season, this gave us leeway and a lot of leverage in transfers because we were able to offer fees that nobody else else could offer to clubs that needed the income as well due to the crash. Now this worked as a positive because we were able to get the players that we wanted. We were also able to go relatively unchallenged for these players as well because for most of the other clubs they had to use their funds elsewhere around the team. So we were able to use that to our advantage but that also came as a disadvantage as well because we didn't need to sell our players. We weren't forced to try and sell players at lower prices as well in order to try and raise funds to get players into the squad which meant that we were trying to sell players at that same valuation price that we had before the pandemic started. This meant that no team could really reach our valuation fees for those players because we kept them at, at the top. We weren't even trying to lower them down a little bit because we wanted to try and keep the normal valuation fees for our players, which meant that Deadwood players that Lampard wanted to try and get rid of like Alonso, like Emerson, Kepper, Jorginho, players like that, we found it really hard to try and sell them. And for the most part, they never end up leaving. We end up getting players like Barkley and Loftus-Cheek on loan. But for the most part, most of the players stayed. This meant that we had a massively overinflated squad with multiple players fighting for not enough positions on the pitch. Right now, we have four goalkeepers, including Petr Cech, who, to be honest, is our number two goalkeeper anyway. We have five centre-backs fighting for two spots in the starting eleven. We've got three left-backs fighting for one spot. And we've got six centre-midfielders fighting for three spots. 
This is creating a massive problem with the squad, especially with Frank Lampard and his unwillingness to rotate in certain areas, like especially the back five of the pitch, for example. This means that we've got two left backs that barely play. We've got three centre backs that barely play. And this is leading to some of the fringe players turning on Frank Lampard. Now, the Athletic have already reported this as well. We can only speculate what the names are, but we can have a rough guess. Just take a look at the players that haven't been playing regularly and you probably have your main culprits out there. But this is leading to a massively unsettled squad at Chelsea. And this combined with poor form is a giant red flag. We've all seen this situation before with managers falling out with the dressing room. And right now, we look like we're on the route to that happening again. For Frank Lampard to change this, some of these players need to go in January. It is easier said than done. Teams are still recovering from the pandemic and the fallout from all of it in terms of the income and everything like that. So I understand that it's not going to be easy for him to do. It still does need to be done though. We need to get rid of some of these players to try and improve the morale around the squad. Because right now, fringe players, players like, if I had to make a guess, Marcus Alonso, Fikayo Tomori, Kepa, Jorginho, these lot aren't happy with the game time that they're having. Especially if they see other players performing terribly in their positions, they're not going to be happy with the lack of game time around their squad. So I understand why they would be complaining, but this is also something that Frank Lampard needs to try and fix if he wants to try and improve results to the squad because an unhappy team is only going to lead one way and we all know what that way is. My final point that I'd like to see Frank Lampard improve make earlier substitutions and I say this with the disclaimer that I know that he made earlier substitutions in the Man City game but that was also too little too late we're already 3-0 down by that get by that point so I don't care too much but the fact is we do need to see Frank Lampard start make start to make earlier substitutions we complain about rotation we complain about the fixture list throughout the Christmas period all that we want if we don't make any changes until the 70th minute in nearly every single game we do it to ourselves every single time the only time I've seen us make 45 minute substitutions or any time closer to the to half time than the 70th minute was when we were 2-0 down against Arsenal and when we were 3-0 down against Manchester City both times we were chasing the game both times we were reacting there's been plenty of games where we've seen a player play absolutely terribly and everyone is screaming sub him off get him off get this player on and we don't do it until the 70th minute the 75th minute the 80th minute and they got barely any time to have any impact. Tammy Abraham against Spurs for an example. Anyone could have told you he should have come off for Olivier Giroud. And this ain't even the first time we say it. Whenever Tammy Abraham plays up front or Timo Werner plays up front, we're all screaming that we don't have a focal point. We're all screaming for a focal point and he don't show up until the 75th minute. Barely any time to do anything. Credit to Lampard. Two of the three substitutions against Manchester City were early subs and they both combined to make a goal. Cool. We still lost 3-1. The subs were still too late. So that kind of doesn't really have too much of an impact in my in my point of view. Frank Lampard does need to make these earlier substitutions. And you know what the most jarring part of this is? He used to be really good at these substitutions. I remember throughout Project Restart, we were all saying Frank Lampard's substitutions changed the game. Lampard's substitutions changed the game. He was smart. He was reactive. He didn't wait till we went 1-0 down to make a change. He made the change before that. We are, we're not seeing that now. Lampard's regressed as a manager. The players are regressing and the squad and the tactics are regressing. Everything is going backwards right now and we need to see change. And Earlier substitutions would be the best sort of change that he could do in the game. Everything else I'm talking about is areas outside the pitch, outside the 90 minutes. But right now... Right now, the biggest change you can make in a game, make the substitutions earlier before it's too late. But guys, this is the end of four things Frank Lampard needs to change in order to get results to improve. Let me know if you agree or disagree with any of my thoughts down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to Carefree Lewis G. And I'll see you guys very soon. Take care and up the chels.